There are almost 200 official countries in the world today, but there are dozens more breakaway states, determined to be separate, but officially not recognized. Some survive peacefully with their own borders, money, and presidents, but others are a magnet for terrorists and weapon smuggling, and have armies ready for a fight. Welcome to places that don't exist. One hundred years ago, Muslim Azerbaijan used to supply half the world's oil. In recent years, Western oil firms have invested vast sums here. But officially, Azerbaijan is still at war with neighboring Armenia. My guide, Tural, took me to see the front line. When the Soviet Union broke up, Azerbaijan and Armenia got their independence but a small mountainous area called Nagorno-Karabakh triggered war. Stalin had given it to Azerbaijan, but historically it had been mainly Armenian Christian. So when it wanted to break away and become independent, Armenia sent troops in and helped the Karabakh army push the Azeris out. Going up towards the hills here, which overlook the front line positions. Ahead were the front line trenches between Azerbaijan and the breakaway state of Nagorno-Karabakh. To get from here to this trench, we've got to cross some open ground. So we're going to do it a little bit quickly. The front line here is still very dangerous. There's been people killed regularly, and there was a guy killed here just last weekend. The biggest threat here is from snipers firing from Nagorno-Karabakh. A sniper could shoot you here, within range. OK, maybe I'll uh, come down a bit then. <laughs> We're about one and a half kilometers away, so a sniper could reach us easily. Tarao's family come from land now occupied by Karabakh soldiers. They were forced to leave when the conflict started in the late 80s. How do you feel being so close to the front line? Um, I feel... I have a temptation here, being so close to my native land. The sense of revenge is growing in me. A desire for vengeance. I have a desire to get my land back by any means. And if a warfare is one of the powerful means, is one of the real means to get that land back, I'm completely ready to fight for the freedom of my homeland. We left the front line and headed back into Azerbaijan. We just stopped at the kebab shop by the side of the road. And it's run by some men from, originally from Nagorno-Karabakh. And hopefully, they're going to feed us. Assalamu alaikum. The owners of the restaurant were refugees, forced to flee their homeland a decade ago. They said they'd witnessed Armenian atrocities. Well, it smells good. It's a good sign. Can you give me some examples of what you claim the Armenians were doing to the Azeris living in Nagorno-Karabakh? They put children, women and elderly people together inside a pipe and welded it. Then they rolled those pipes down from the mountains. We've seen many savage actions by the Armenians. We've seen everything with our own eyes, what kind of torture our sisters, our daughters, our mothers were put through. I can't describe it all. It makes me angry and I want to explode. We've seen them being beheaded. Then they suddenly asked us to stop filming. We chatted to the owners of the kebab shop for a little bit, but then they got a bit nervous. And uh, so they said, why don't you go and have some food? Because 
they felt a bit tense talking to us. There's a lot of concern, even amongst refugees, about talking about Nagorno-Karabakh because it's such a contentious issue, even now, more than 10 years after the conflict is supposed to have ended. It turns out the owners of the restaurant weren't quite as worried about the political nature of the questions we were asking. What they were actually worried about was because several years ago, this place used to be a cafe slash brothel almost, and uh, there was a news report on Azeri TV revealing this. And then we turned up with our cameras and they started to wonder if we were doing the same thing. So we've got here some lamb and also some natural yogurt. I might leave that. Thank you very much for the performance. It was very unexpected. Do you know any songs about Karabakh, about Nagorno Karabakh? There are many songs about Karabakh. Karabakh is our heart, our land. I promised myself not to sing about Karabakh until we've returned to that land. We can't sing songs about Karabakh because when you sing about Karabakh, tears come to your eyes, your heart aches. I promised myself to sing a song on the day we return to our land. Almost all the Azeris living in Nagorno-Karabakh were forced to leave during the war and found shelter wherever they could in Azerbaijan. There's between 750,000 and perhaps a million people in Azerbaijan who are refugees from the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. And we've come here to some railway sidings where there's dozens of families living in railway carriages. What are the conditions like for you here? There's no electricity. There's no water. There's no heating. And their children's voices coming from these carriages. It's a school here. Is it the school? One of the schools. Can we have a look? Can there lessons? Children study here in unheated railway carriages with hardly any equipment or books. How long have you been living here?